May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> you know, some of us have not seen the demand on our lives. You have not seen how important it is for you to be in alignment. If God were ever to show you the number of destinies that are depending on your accuracy, eh? you will know that there is much to be done. There are things you won't take for granted. If God were ever to show you the demands on your life, where he wants to take you to, and what is necessary to get there, you will not joke with certain things. If God were to show you. Ah. If God were to show you. How many of you are not married? Raise your hand. How many of you who have raised your hands are virgins? Because, because there's no difference between you and the people in the world. There's no difference. If you are looking for a virgin, you better not waste your time in the church. Because the church is as, as the same behavior, the same things that we used to do when we were in the world. That is the same behavior that we are doing now that we are calling ourselves Christians. It's the same thing. You can't get a girl in the church and say, oh, because she's in the church and she's been in the church for four years, she must be a virgin. Or because she's been in the church since she was uh, 14 years old or 16, she's a virgin. No! Look at them, some of them in the choir, in the church, all over, all kinds of lifestyles. You don't want me to say it. You don't, you don't want me to say it. Then go to another religion and join another religion. You don't want me to say it. Ah. You want to change the religion. But there are other religions you can choose from. There are other religions. I don't know why you want, you want to be a Christian without taking up your cross. You can't. There is a standard. Jesus never lowered his standard for anybody. Remember the rich man? No, no, no. Jesus told the rich man, go and sell all your riches and go everything. Come. Come and follow me. Just like Peter, just like James, just like John, everybody else. The Bible says, if any man, any man, any man, any man, any man, anybody, anybody, including you, anybody who wants to come and follow Jesus Christ, take up your cross deny yourself and follow Christ the music you list, used to listen to you cannot listen to the same music again get down on it get down on it what are you getting down on what is that get down on it get down on it what do you mean by get down on it what are you getting on to <laughs> some of you have sugar that you can give you one thousand dollars for one night You can't have a sugar daddy anymore. Wait, let me tell you something. If you've come to Christ, eh, you are going to suffer. And if you are not prepared to suffer, leave the church and join another religion. Eh? You are moving with liars, moving with thieves. Thieves are your friends. Arm robbers are your friends. Do you, you think it, cannot, it will not have an effect on you? In the name of business, in the name of getting all these things in the world, we have sacrificed Christ himself. And to be a Christian, you must take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow him. When I came to Christ, I had to, I lost, my friends were half cast. If you look at me carefully, you see that I'm a half cast. Look carefully, can you see? Because my mother... Is from Switzerland. Every, every child grows up. Your friends are your mother's friends, children. My mother's friends were Germans, Austrians, uh, Swiss people, and uh, my friends were all half cast. I didn't, I didn't know uh, Bishop Saka. I had not seen him before. Or oh, Bishop Eddie. I grew up with such people. My life was in a different co context altogether. When I came to Christ, look, that's why I thank God for a sister, a sister called Betty. You should thank God for friends in the church. She took me for the first time to action. I've never, I've not been to, I've not seen such people before. She took me to um, 31st night with the Reverend Owusei Frie. I've never been to such a program. 31st night, we used to do other things. She introduced me to a new, new people, new places, new music, new everything. And you, you sacrifice the old friends, the old people, the old lifestyle. Everything must go. That is the cost of Christianity. Unless you can join another religion, that's what I keep emphasizing. Go and become something else and you can go to hell if you want to. But if you are coming to Christ, if, if, if any man, if any man. 
You know, some of us have not seen the demand on our lives. You have not seen how important it is for you to be in alignment. If God were ever to show you the number of destinies that are depending on your accuracy, eh? you will know that there is much to be done. There are things you won't take for granted. If God were ever to show you the demands on your life, where he wants to take you to, and what is necessary to get there, you will not joke with certain things. If God were to show you. Ah, if God were to show you. You will now become so serious that if they come and call you Jim Jim, just imagine Mary walking around in her village and say, look at this one. Uh, 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 the men don't marry virgins. Oh. That's what they tell some young girls. That no, oh, virginity is outdated. Then Mary now became depressed. She will still be alive, but somebody else will be carrying her destiny. So he said, the reason the man maintains the consecration of a soldier is that he might please him. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. When God's heart becomes the motive for your existence on the face of the earth, you earn a place in the hand of God that many men never arrive at. Many Christians live home. Many Christians do things, but there, there are few men that God will speak of in glowing terms. See the way he spoke about Moses and Samuel. He was about to take judgment against his own people. And he told them, even if Moses and Samuel come and stand before me, I will still not show you mercy. What kind of men were those? That God recognized that these were men that had the ability to bend him in a certain direction. He allowed himself to be vulnerable to Samuel. God allowed himself to be vulnerable to Moses. That if Moses came and cried, God would say, okay, now you, okay, where I go? Were there no other men living? I remember when I read Ezekiel 22 for the first time. I noticed the Bible began to give a breakdown of what led to the invasion. Men that were supposed to be warriors in the land. Men that were supposed to stand as bulwarks. As a defense. That is where the corruption started from first. He said, my priests have violated my law. They have profaned my holy things. They have not separated between the sacred and the secular. The holy and the unholy. So it means that the, the reason God raised the office of the priest was so that it would be a defense. He went further. He said, my princes have become ravenous wolves. Instead of caring for the sheep that I put under the prince's jurisdiction, they are now feeding on the people that they, were, they are supposed to protect. My prophets... They prophesy falsely. Saying, Thus said the Lord, when the Lord has not spoken. They prophesy falsely. And the people. So as the failures began to happen in, at that level, automatically the people they were raising also became corrupted. So and the people, they have begun to commit all kinds of atrocities, all kinds of lawlessness, all kinds of crimes. Then in verse 30, the Lord now cries out. It's almost like the cry of a lover. I sought for a man. You know the thing that pains me about that scripture? I sought for a man from amongst them. He didn't go to look for a man outside. He sought for a man from amongst them. My brothers and sisters, they were men alive. Oh. Are you hearing me? Men were living. The priest was still alive. The prophet was still alive. The princes were still alive. He said, I sought for a man amongst them. The reason he didn't call them men, even though they had the physical nomenclature that qualified them to be men, was that there was a consecration required that they didn't meet. 
May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> Welcome back from that video. I know you are blessed in that video. This is Kingdom Audio TV channel. Please do want to like our video, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification button so you'll be notified whenever we have a video like this. Don't forget to drop your comment, drop your point of view. I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen.